Of all the creatures on Earth, man is the most destructive. Our incessant desire to raise our levels of consumption and the kinds of technologies that we use have the world being consumed at a rate faster than it can replenish itself. Why do we have the right to destroy early living companions in the universe? Plants are life. We depend on them for the characteristics of the air we breathe, the purity of the water that we drink, the preservation of the topsoils that allow us to grow our crops. We depend on them directly or indirectly for all of our food, for a great majority of our medicines, many of our building materials, and in ways that we have yet to discover. We need them in our whole wonder and diversity to live dignified and sustainable and healthy lives. The Missouri Botanical Garden ranks among the top world leaders in the science of plant biology and the preservation of our global ecosystem. The mission of the garden is to discover and share knowledge about plants and their environment in order to preserve and enrich life. The impact of the garden is global in scope, with plant science and conservation work underway in 36 nations on six continents. Garden staff members work with local people in regions of the greatest biodiversity to preserve endangered plant species and promote botanical education and sustainability. Beyond the beauty and activities garden visitors enjoy each day is a vast international effort that is being directed from offices and laboratories right here in St. Louis. Garden scientists manage the most productive and geographically widespread botanical research program in the world. We coined the term Unseen Garden here about 25 years ago with the meaning that there's lots that goes on here behind the scenes. Tropical plant specimens are shipped to the botanical garden from all around the globe and placed in cold storage. There, they undergo a thorough inventory process. The new specimens are then forwarded to garden scientists for further study and analysis. The identification process can lead to the discovery of new species. Over 100,000 specimens are added to the garden's collection each year. Shipments like these from Madagascar may provide nourishing new foods, more effective medicines, or simply enrich our understanding of the wealth of plant specimens on our planet. Once the plants are classified, they must be mounted for inclusion in our garden herbarium. Its priceless archive contains more than six million specimens. The specimens are filed in a climate-controlled vault in a building that can withstand earthquakes and other natural disasters. Together with the herbarium, the garden's library provides a vital resource for scientists and scholars from around the globe, including rare books dating to the 15th century. This is one of the world's finest collections of botanical literature. Cutting-edge technology captures illustrations that were out of circulation for a century or more. All of the garden's scientifically identified plant images are being assembled into Tropicos, the world's largest online botanical database. This important global resource was created by the Missouri Botanical Garden. You don't have to be a botanist to appreciate the beauty and variety of plant specimens on display in this magnificent city oasis. The garden today is a place to reconnect with nature. Garden members and visitors find much to explore and enjoy firsthand in every season throughout the year. One of the largest traditional Japanese gardens in North America, Seiwa-in, the Garden of Pure, Clear Harmony and Peace, incorporates many principles of Japanese aesthetics. The intimate and charming Chinese garden captures the spirit of a traditional scholar's garden. The lush informality of the English woodland garden attracts people and wildlife alike. The Ottoman garden provides a rare example of the exotic plants of the Ottoman Empire. The Victorian district is the historical heart of the garden. It features Tower Grove House, Henry Shaw's country estate, the Victorian maze and observatory, pincushion and herb gardens, and a Victorian garden from Shaw's native England. Additional features of Shaw's original 19th century garden include the Spink Pavilion, 
which served as the main entrance, the museum building, which housed Shaw's library and herbarium, and the Linnaean House. It is the oldest continuously operating greenhouse conservatory in the United States. One of the most recognizable icons of the garden is the Climatron Conservatory. Here, visitors are transported into the lush environment of a tropical rainforest. The Temperate House complements the Climatron. It features plants from five regions in the world that share a Mediterranean climate. Youngsters love the children's garden, designed for learning as well as fun. The William T. Kemper Center for Home Gardening caters to the number one hobby in the United States, gardening. Its 23 distinct demonstration gardens and information resources provide home gardeners with tips and advice throughout the year. West of St. Louis is the 2,400-acre Shaw Nature Reserve. The restored prairie, wetlands, woodlands and glades offer a unique outdoor laboratory with opportunities for education and exploration of the natural world. In Faust Park, the magnificent Sophia M. Sachs Butterfly House showcases the wonders of butterflies and insects of all varieties. Our Earthway Center showcases sustainable lifestyle choices. The energy efficiency, water saving, recycling, and other technologies demonstrated here are directly linked to the garden's work towards sustainability worldwide. And like all our efforts, they can be traced back to the legacy bequeathed by Henry Shaw when he established the Missouri Botanical Garden 150 years ago. Shaw envisioned the garden as a scientific institution to be maintained for all time for the public benefit. Its mission to preserve and protect plant life and advance the science of botany remains as vital today as in Shaw's time and has in fact grown in global reach and scope along with the challenges that confront us. So the question that we're facing is really not whether we're driving ourselves towards extinction. The question that we're facing is when are we going to level things out and reach a kind of a sustainability so that our children and grandchildren and ourselves can really live in a world that is something we can be proud of. Plants are so beautiful and elegant that it's easy to forget that we depend on them entirely for our survival. Our power, our obligation to manage the earth for better or for worse has never been greater. We depend on plants and now they depend on us. Let's resolve to save them together. The earth is a garden and we are all gardeners. And by partnering together as stewards of the earth, we continue Henry Shaw's now 150-year-old vision to preserve and enrich life.